Hello, and welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for wanting to share my journey into the world of pens. It's something I really enjoy. Um, and thanks to that thing called the internet and eBay and Etsy and Amazon and amazing amounts of places that you can go to find exceptional writing instruments. So yes, I got a package today. And yes, it was from overseas. And it was an eBay buy. And it's the first pen I've received uh, from Israel. So the pen was very well protected in this plastic tube. It had tape. It had paper on it. Uh, it was wrapped in um, paper towels. But now we're going to look at the pen. So it's a brown pen. It's tastefully done. Um, probably not many of you recognize this pen. Pull off cap. We'll take a look at the nib. It's an 18 karat nib, so it's certainly a nice nib. It's a good size pen. It posts well. It's very light. So why do I have this pen? Well, those that are you are into aviation might see some resemblance to the Concorde plane, which was that super fast plane uh, made in France. Kind of seeing where I'm going. And this is a Waterman's Concorde pen. We're going to delve into the history. I'm going to clean it up. I wanted to show you the as received condition, which was actually quite good. It has one of the stranger converters I've ever seen. It's a slide push pull converter that I guess Waterman used. Maybe only on this pen, I don't know. The plastic is brushed, it feels really nice, but it is very light. It came, this pen came in many versions, but here's the eBay auction, and I think when you see the price, you'll realize why I, I bought it. Um, these things can go for hundreds of dollars. They come in many, many variations. And I actually found an eBay auction of someone selling the nibs, and these nibs come in a great variety. I'm tempted to buy the nibs, but I need to write with this pen before I decide on whether that's a good deal. I always thinks it's uh, nice when the seller puts in a little handwritten note. So uh, that's good. And it just kind of shows how eBay is all integrated. It generates packing slips. This is all done uh, when it recognizes my payment through PayPal. I'm always made certain that it, it's going to provide the correct shipping address. So this whole system works very, very well, and I'm very happy with it. And I end up with a pen that I didn't know existed until I saw someone post something on Instagram about it. And I go, I've never heard of that pen. Of course, I go to eBay. I find this one. I buy it. And now I get to share with you a pen that I think is an iconic pen from the 70s. I always flush every pen I get and this one with this converter flushes very nicely. There was only a little bit of residual ink left in here so I was very pleased with that. And there was uh, only no, no ink left in the cap which is also a good sign and the flow seems to be pretty good so I'm looking forward to putting ink in here and putting nib to paper. You may say, Chris, I'm not a fan of push-pull converters, and neither am I, but I'll probably keep this one in this pen just for keeping it historically consistent. But Waterman, like Parker, used the same design when they went to a cartridge converter pen. So here's a converter from the 90s, which fits fine. Here's a cartridge from recently, which fits fine. The barrel was designed to be able to accommodate both of these well. So kudos to Waterman for being consistent with this filling system. Uh, I wish a lot of other major pen makers did the same. 
I've had the pen now for a couple of weeks and um, I have some disappointing news. This is the ink that I decided to put in it. Aurora Blue Black. I just wanted a basic ink. So I didn't want the ink to have any impact or potential issues with this uh, pen. You know, I still think the design is is nice and I and and unique, and from that viewpoint, it, it's of interest. But um, to me, pens are to write with, and that in this in that area, this pen lets me down quite a bit. You know, the cap fits very securely; it pops off uh, with a little bit of effort, so you don't have to worry about it coming off accidentally. You know, post securely. As I mentioned, there's no weight. We'll give you the weights for the pen, but one of the challenges that I've had with this pen is is that nib, when you write with it, it just appears loose. You can see how it springs away from the feed. So when you're writing on paper, it just gives you not a good feedback and doesn't feel good in your hand. We'll bring back Mr. Crab in case he has any comments. This section has facets on it, which I find uncomfortable. It forces you into a particular way of holding a pen. And I like to move my fingers around when I write. Uh, kind of alleviates uh, fatigue and cramping, which I can get when I'm writing multiple pages. So this is not comfortable when I do that. And I don't like to feel this nib on paper. We're going to give you a writing example, but I just wanted to give you an update. The first impressions were not fulfilled when I actually got to write. When I was doing my research on the pen, I found a lot of references to this earlier model of the Waterman, the CC, their first cartridge converter pen. You know, the angle at the top is similar. You got your little gold ring at the bottom of the barrel. I also think that design is emulated in, in the Karen pen, but it's at the bottom of the barrel. All of these pens post well. I think where they really show a lot in common is the nib and section area. Before you faint, yes, the Karen I have is a ballpoint. I bought it because I wanted to experience the design and this was really cheap. It was delivered under 30 bucks. And I figured if I really liked it, I could get a nib and replace the ballpoint section uh, with a nib. But the nibs cost as much as a new pen. So, And I didn't fall in love with the design. I know a lot of people love the Karen, but it just uh, didn't work for me. The CC pen also has a similar history with me. I have a few of these. Uh, the nibs on, on any of them I'm not a fan of. And it's a similar type of scenario that I have with the Concord here. The nibs are very fine. Um, they give you just a strange feedback that I'm not comfortable with. You know, I've learned to like extra fine and fine nibs uh, more than I used to, but these examples uh, just don't work for me. And I also consider the Concord to be the example of what I call the the bad time for fountain pens, which is in the 60s and 70s and, and into the 80s, where I think design was kind of wandering around. And they also cheapened up the pens uh, from, from my experience with many of them um, and didn't really focus on the writing aspect of it. Um, and that, to me, makes them not as desirable as some of the other pens, especially the pens that I like from the vintage era. This pen lengthwise fits fine in a hand posted. We give you those weights. I mean, this pen is, is very light. At least it feels very light to me. And again, like I said, that section, and we'll give you the dimensions of the section, is not one that appeals to me. But let's see how that nib works on paper. You can see it took a while for that ink to really start flowing. 
And I think you can hear that feedback from the paper. Uh, you know, the way this nib, you know, it's kind of soft, but yet it doesn't give you uh, the type of feedback that I expect from a soft nib. It just kind of like bends up and uh, it's not a pen that I enjoy writing with. So I think this is the most unrecommended pen I could possibly make to anybody unless you really just want this through the design aspects of it stay away from it and this thing can run into the hundreds of dollars if you try to buy this pen you know from like uber pens or whatever and i'm certain i could play around with the converter but i'm not going to be able to fix that section that i don't like so at the end i'm saying stay away from this pen so thank you for watching I wish I had something better to say about this pen. I had high expectations as you gathered from my unboxing and, and my initial impressions, but uh, once I inked it up and put nib on paper, it sadly did not come close to being a, a pleasant writer. So hopefully you have other better pen experiences and you know, it is a little bit of a look at history and to me a design that hopefully now is never gonna be replicated. So we've reached the end of this video. Until next time, bye. I'm probably a little bit low on ink, so we'll assume that it's now empty so I can flush it and put it away. This is a postscript message. After the writing failed on this Concord pen, I went to clean it out and it was completely full of ink, so it wasn't the fact that the pen had run out of ink as I had originally thought. I was going to change out the converter and put in Waterman Blue to see if that would matter, but then I don't like writing with the pen, so it's going to be put back together and maybe in another day when I get more motivated, I may revisit it and see if I can get it to write the way that I would like it to. So I just thought I would add this little addendum to the video. So enjoy your writing. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your life. Till the next video. Bye.